Today on the show, we are so excited to have with us Tommy Siegel, the creator of I Hope This Helps, Comics and Cures for a 21st Century Panic, which is kind of a, a accidental product, I believe, of his 500 Comics in 500 Days project. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So I am really curious, how do you define smart humor versus biting humor versus mean humor? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's one of those things that um, it's always changing, right? Even, I mean, even like uh, my mood will change and I'll think a comic is mean that before I thought was just funny or, or society will change and we'll decide that something is, is mean or you know, more mean than funny. So yeah, I don't know if you can really like you can really pin it down. It's kind of a feeling, you know, it's like that, um, what is that old, like, <laughs> there's that old Supreme Court case where the, where oh. we're ha deciding <laughs> what was like, what constituted pornography. And then, and they end up, the legal definition is just like, I know what, I know it when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel like humor kind of fits in that category too, because it's always changing. You know, something's, you know, something's like, a certain kind of funny when you see it, but 10 years later, that might not be true. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, and I guess one of the things that we like to talk about on the show, Do Dead, this, this thingy, is the issue of like civility in humor and civility mm. in politics and discourse. So I was really eager to like get your take on like an incident when you have had to reel a joke back or when you've seen a joke online circulating that you're like, oh gosh, if that were worded differently, that could actually change someone's mind, but instead it is turning off people. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I think you might be disappointed by my, my <laughs> any insights I would have um because i'm constantly feeling it out like every new political cartoon that i post i'm just thinking like okay someone's gonna get mad at me for it i just hope it's the right people so mm. um you know i think um so to me the, the ones that i'm the most proud of in terms of political cartoons are the ones that inspire embarrassment from from the people that I'm trying to target and not righteous anger. And that's like hard to predict. But like for example, like I kind of waded into a recent this is this was a bad one. So a few a, a few weeks ago I waded into one that wasn't even like it wasn't offensive or anything. It was just um I stumbled into a bee's nest essentially. But uh it was a cartoon about, you know, we, that we could flip, you know, all these like hipsters in exile from cosmopolitan places right now that if, you know, if just a hundred thousand of them moved across four states, like Wyoming, Montana, I think uh, North Dakota and Alaska, then we would flip eight Senate seats, um, which, you know, I guess I'm looking at the future of political and civil conflict in America, and I'm going like, that might be the easiest way for us forward. But other people saw it as a call to arms, oh, as, um, you, <laughs> oh, know, <no. laughs> as a, a, you know, godless liberal imperialism. I really wandered into a place that you know, a lot of like right wing militia groups were spreading around saying like, you know, look what this Marxist Jew wants to do. This is they, they will stop at nothing to destroy our way of life. Um, so it went viral in this really dark way. And oh no, I'm, I'm not really sure. I guess I'm not really sure what I should have done differently, but it was certainly a learning experience because I realized that I was fitting into a narrative about um, my supposed identity by these internet trolls um i mean i am jewish but um you know whether i'm a marxist neoliberal or whatever whatever terms they're mashing together that don't make any sense um but yeah it just it just ended up being i think an unproductive discourse whereas interestingly a more insulting cartoon that i that i had posted um i think the day after that was oddly productive it was like basically I was just doing a parody of the kind of like um, sort of uh, don't tread on me 
right wing flags that are being used a lot these days. Um, and so I, I'd, I'd made one that was like tread on me daddy that was like a, the, the, the Gadsden <laughs> oh, no. flag with the snake, but like with a ball gag and, and like a leash and oh, like that. Um, <laughs> and I found that that one was actually weirdly like it went viral and it went into spaces where people should have gotten mad. But I thought what was useful about it is my point was that, you know, if you're on the MAGA train at this point and you, you supposedly care about liberty, like you're, you're a hypocrite. You know what I mean? You're, Trump is your daddy. And <laughs> you're not saying don't tread on me. You're saying tread on me, daddy. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, it's like and, uh, it's like that um, Adam Tots cartoon where it's like, uh, "I will do anything to defend America. I am free, blah blah blah, freedom." And then someone's like, "Wear a mask." And then, what? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but so th that that comic I found interesting because it it's, it seemed to go viral in a lot of spaces where I would have gotten a lot of blowback. But I think I think MAGA people were maybe slightly embarrassed when they saw it, or they knew that if they commented that if they said anything pro-Trump that people would just be like, oh, tread on me, daddy, you know? Um, well, so I don't know. Maybe that's better. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'm, I am wondering, too, like, do you get the sense that when you post something, you're not just po posting it into the echo chamber void, but that people of a variety of political views are following you? Because that's one thing I'm worried about. Like, as I grow and try to get a grow into this field, like, I really would love for a variety of people to see my stuff. And I guess that helps because my foundation is uh, the hashtag resistance Lincoln Project people, which is, uh, from my understanding, pretty broad in terms of political beliefs. But I'm, sure. I want to make sure to continue that and reach out to a wide, the widest audience possible. Um, yeah, I, I, think the, I think the only way to have a wide audience like that is to, to do a fair amount of non-political humor ah um, because, oh right because you do both exactly <laughs> yeah right so i mean well, the the difficulty the difficult balance that that i'm always trying to juggle is um that some of my followers follow me for specific there, there's been certain segments of my comics that have gone viral enough to attract new people and they're very different so like for example i was doing nude art of the pringle man for a while and there were a lot of people who found that funny on like kind of a meme sort of a way so that that drew in a lot of like just internet memers kind Not of that <laughs> that type of person yeah. and then my political cartoons draw on a certain kind of people my really silly dumb cartoons draw on another kind of person and then these I do these candy hearts comics and those are the ones that seem to draw in because they speak very broadly about just human relationships, they kind of draw in anybody who, you know, is, is like struck by them. So then, you know, once those people are, are assembled in a following, then you post a political cartoon, you get to find out like where, where people stand. And I think in general, the people who have, who have been annoyed by me have unfollowed me. So, you know, diversity of viewpoint is, the internet isn't really designed for that anymore. Like that's, mm. I, like, I feel like what you're talking about is almost like if you were like getting published in the Washington Post or something, you would get a lot of different kinds of people because you're coming through a more neutral vessel mm. than everyone else. The way I feel like social media algorithms work is by exacerbating that divide. And so the way that I generally come across people who don't agree with my viewpoint um, is when it goes viral, like when it goes, something goes hate viral. Mm. So like if someone's quote tweeting one of my comics and saying like, look how dumb this is. Oh, for instance, you know oh, what I mean? People do that a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm pretty used to, uh, it's something I don't talk about super often, but I mean, I've gotten very used to like, if I post a political cartoon, I'm going to get death threats. Um, death threats? Like death yeah. threats? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's oh insane. Pe people send crazy stuff. I've just gotten used to just. I you have to assume they're cowards on some level. Um, you and uh, Gretchen Whitmer should start a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But no, I mean, I, I'm also just like they're always anonymous, and they're always like, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to stop making comics. So, 
the simplest thing is just to block people. But, um, you know, I wish that there was an easier way to like report it to like the police or something, but there, there really isn't. Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, it's kind of be careful what you wish for is all I'm saying, because if you're posting, if you're making comics that are incendiary or making a strong political point, uh, is high likelihood of not uh, your diversity of viewpoint, I would say not being like a spectrum, but more like you've wandered into a different echo chamber. Mm. And it's just a, it's a rival echo chamber, you know what I mean? Which isn't really the same feeling as like, oh, I just, I'm reaching moderate Republicans and some lefties and, you know, it's like, I'm either reaching <laughs> lefties or like I happen to wander into the, the, the MAGA room, you know what I mean? So. Right, yeah, totally. 